Hey, let me tell you a joke. <laughs> what did the dog say as he sat on some sandpaper? When he sat on the sandpaper. Yeah, when he sat on some sandpaper. He said, ow, ow, ow. No, he said, roof, roof. Hello everyone and welcome to Vet Talk. My name is Dr. Claire and today we are talking about paralysis ticks. Paralysis ticks extend all the way from far north Queensland all the way down to Victoria. So if you live in these areas, it's really important that you have tick prevention for your dog or cat. Now what we're seeing as it heats up and we're approaching the warmer months, we are getting a surge in the population of paralysis ticks, meaning we're seeing more of these cases coming through the door. So um, this video is about making you guys more aware of what paralysis tick is and how you can keep your fur baby safe. Now, the scientific name for paralysis tick, just in case you're wondering, is Exodes holocyclus. So it sounds like something out of Star Wars, but it's not, it's this little baby here. They start less than a millimeter in size. They are really tiny. And over a few days, as they are, are on your dog, they become this big. No, they don't really. <laughs> they just, they become about one centimeter in size. So you might be wondering, how do our pets get paralysis ticks in the first place? Well, what happens in the tick's life cycle is there's a stage called the nymph stage. And when they're there, they um, are out in the open environment because they're usually hosted by possums or bandicoots. So wherever they live, paralysis tick usually is. So when they're at the life cycle stage of the nymph, they crawl up onto blades of grass or onto leaves out in the environment. And they sit there waiting for your dog or cat to run past. When they do, they latch onto their fur coat and then they burrow in into the fur to find somewhere for them to live. They like the crevices, you know, behind the ears, in the lip folds, between, between their little toes on their paws are common places where ticks burrow in. Once they've got a spot that they like, they uh, latch on and they inject their toxin and they feed off that suck your little baby's blood. So they're pretty disgusting things and we'd be happy to prevent them from, from touching your little pet. It started out small. It's got measles bumps. It's a tick. But then they grew. Don't move. There's something on your back. Get it off now! A common question I get is how do you know when your dog has paralysis tick? Well, the surest way to diagnose paralysis tick is to find the tick itself on your dog. So I always recommend to clients that they are running their fingers through their pet's hair, dog or cat, and checking for ticks. So you can do that, just start at the head, around the, the mouth and the ears, and work your way down and down onto the legs. Make sure that you're running your fingers through all those little cracks and crevices that I mentioned before, because often that's where they are. If you're too late and the tick has been there for some time, because as I said, they start off less than a millimeter in size, so it's going to be very difficult to detect at first, then you're going to probably see clinical signs. But some of the first clinical signs we see is vomiting and weakness in the back legs. So if your dog is at all wobbly or reluctant to stand up. They, they don't want to use their back legs. So sometimes people say they're being really lazy, they haven't wanted to go for their walk today. He's just not being himself. I found a little bit of vomit. Then the vet's probably thinking, hmm, I wonder if this is a paralysis tip. Other signs include excessive salivation or drooling, and they can also have a hoarse sounding meow or a hoarse sounding bark because it paralyzes the throat and the vocal cords as well. If you find the tick too late and the, the clinical signs are far progress, it's going to be worse. And what we see then is difficulties breathing. So real respiratory distress. Dogs are really gasping for air. And when we see that, it often is accompanied by quite dull gray mucous membranes. In that case, it is a real emergency. And those patients are in critical condition 
and sometimes we lose them. But regardless of how your dog presents or what clinical signs are there or none at all, if you find a paralysis tick on your pet, you should be going straight down to the vet for a consultation because there's often a residual effect. Even after the tick has been removed, the toxin is already in your cat or dog's bloodstream and that toxin will then start to take effect. So we say to all our clients, if you find a paralysis tick on your pet, come straight in, whether there's clinical signs or not. That is really important. So you might be wondering what happens when your little baby gets admitted into hospital with paralysis tick. Well, it's likely that your vet's going to want to be acting pretty fast because, as I said, this is a life-threatening condition. What we need to do is get your little baby out the back in hospital so we can put them on a drip and give them intravenous fluids, as well as, what's most important, the life-saving anti-venine or anti-serum. And what that does is it binds up the toxin that the tick has injected into the patient. Once we've got them out the back, we've got them stabilised, they've had their antivenine and their on the drip, they have to stay in hospital a lot of the time for a number of days, sometimes over a week, without having anything to eat or drink. And this is a sad thing, but the tick often paralyses their swallowing reflex. So the danger is if they eat and drink, it can go into their lungs, causing aspiration and pneumonia. So that's some of the, one of the precautions that the vets and the vet nurses will be taking. Each case is different and each treatment protocol varies depending on the severity of the tick paralysis. But basically, that's the treatment all our patients have. As I mentioned earlier, there is a residual effect to the tick toxin. So even after we've got them in hospital, we've removed the tick. And when we do remove the tick, we use a thing called a tick twister. And that's really uh, something worth having at home to remove ticks effectively. Now, as I was saying, the residual effect is when we've removed the tick, we've used the tick twister, we've administered the anti-serum, we've treated them, they're on fluids, but they start to get worse. And that's because the toxin is already in their system and unfortunately, they seem to deteriorate for a little while before they get better. And that can be really upsetting for, for us as, as veterinary staff as well, of course, for the owner. But if we get in soon enough and the anti-serum is delivered in time, then it will bind up the toxin and your dog or cat will start to have movement and function to their back legs again and their throat reflex or swallowing reflex will return so they can have some food and water which they're always so happy to have after having a few days or sometimes a week without food and water. So by listening to this video you're probably thinking, I hope you're thinking, well the best thing to do is to prevent this from all happening in the first place and that sure is the key. So prevention of paralysis tick is really important and it's different for dogs and cats. It's really important that you don't put tick prevention created for dogs onto your cats because that does cause a toxic reaction. If you ever do that, please get down to your vet as soon as possible for treatment because that too can be lethal. So what are the effective treatments? In dogs, we have Skullaboard Tip Collars. They're excellent. We've got Spectra Chews. Really recommend them. They're done by NextGuard, Frontline Spot-Ons, and Advantix. They're all really excellent preventions for paralysis ticks. Cats have far fewer options when it comes to tick prevention. They've got Frontier Spray or Frontline Spray or Frontline Spot-Ons fortnightly but their options are less because they're more likely to have toxic effects. So really be careful that you use effective tick treatments on your pets. And the best thing to do, even though there's some great products there that I've mentioned, each animal is different depending on their age, depending on their weight, and of course their health status. So get down to your vet and talk to them about the best one for your pet. I hope you enjoyed this video and now are a little bit more knowledgeable of these horrible critters and can prevent them from touching to your pet and causing tick paralysis. If you have any questions, please jot them down in the comments below. 
hit subscribe if you like this video and you'd like to see more. And you can also follow my Instagram page if you like. Thank you so much for listening and until next time, say hi to your dogs for me.